Toronto Police Chief William Blair joins us now, and we brought him here to talk about hockey, of course. Of course. Right? That's, yeah. That's so what do you think about Strombo? Actually, I, I'm, I'm, I've known George for a while, and I'm very impressed with him. He's uh, something of a Canadian icon himself, and I think he's a great addition to Hockey Night yeah. in Canada. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, I, I'm so pleased that they're going to keep some of that, which is so traditional in Hockey Night in Canada, but add a new element with Strombo. I think it's, it's a great move. All right, but let's get to business. And uh, we want to talk about some of the news that surfaced last week about uh, Project Brazen 2. Uh, now, with the o OPP, uh, doing the oversight into this investigation. What does that mean? Because it doesn't change the way you're doing the investigation, does it? Well, I, well, I think it does make a, a fairly significant and fundamental change. I want the public to have absolute confidence in the work that, that is being done. Um, we have excellent investigators on that, but there has been a number of suggestions um, about my involvement in that investigation. And, and in order to maintain public trust and confidence, I thought the best thing to do would be to approach the Ontario Provincial Police. I spoke to the commissioner. Um, he's an excellent guy, and he agreed to take on responsibility. And, and of course, with that responsibility goes all, with all the authority necessary to ensure that that investigation is done as it should be. And, and so I'll step out, and he'll step in, and, and I'm hoping that the people of Toronto can be confident in, in that that investigation is being done the right way for the right reasons and, and confident in whatever outcome might be produced. Now, Chief, we've seen a very public feud between yourself and the Brothers Ford. Uh, can you comment on that? How has it gotten to this level? Well, I, I'm, I'm not engaged in a feud. I, I think that sort of misrepresents the thing. I, we've got a job to do, and we're just doing that job. And... Uh, you know, I, I, there's been a number of things that have been said, and quite frankly, I choose not to respond to that. Um, again, we have a responsibility to, to serve the, the public interest, to keep the city of Toronto safe, to enforce the law, to conduct investigations, and to do that without fear or favour, and that's what we endeavour to do. Uh, last week, it also surfaced that perhaps there's a new uh, warrant uh, involved in this investigation. What can you tell us about that? Absolutely nothing, as a matter of fact. I think all comments with respect to this investigation should come from the investigators and from the Ontario Provincial Police, and I'll leave it to them. Okay, so let's move along to uh, what broke on Friday, the Sunshine List. Uh, a bit of criticism with about almost 40% of the force making over that 100,000 mark. Uh, and, and there are a lot of people... Uh, criticizing, including one councillor as well, uh, Councillor Mike Del Grand. Uh, well, just uh, I think a little bit of context. First of all, the Toronto Police Service always releases its sunshine list about three weeks before the rest of the province, and that's fine. And and I, I think there should be public accountability and transparency, uh, in, in, whenever you're spending public dollars. Uh, but I think it's also important to note that we have about 300 fewer people on that list this year as opposed to last year. Notwithstanding, um, most of the members of my service received a pay raise last year. Uh, we all, I think the result is, that's the result of a number of steps that have been taken internally. Uh, we've eliminated about 22 of our senior management positions, so those are positions not on that list. As well, we have fewer officers, and we've taken some steps to, to manage our, our premium pay and, and, and our expenditures on salary um, as effectively as we possibly can. So the numbers are actually down. Uh, but, but at the same time, you know, that's, our, our people have uh, a, a contract that establishes their pay rates, and, and frankly, e virtually every police officer uh, above the rank of, of constable automatically makes that list by virtue of, of the fact that that's what their salary is equal to. And the office, the constables are so close that if they do any work and it results in corridor overtime, they're going over that line as well. We, do, we work very hard, I, I can assure you, that to maintain uh, rigid controls of, of those expenditures. We're spending the public's dollars and we have a responsibility to make sure that that, that is done uh, as prudently as possible, as carefully with their money as, as we can to produce the best possible result in public safety and also to make sure that there is no unnecessary expenditures. I, I understand uh, public concern and uh, with respect to that, and, and frankly, the councillor who spoke has also worked very hard with us in order to help us make sure that we rigidly control those expenditures. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's part of doing business. It's a big organization doing a big job in the city of Toronto, but we're trying to be as responsible as we can with the public's money. You know, the councillor did call it out of whack, and one of the surprising stats we saw on there was that eight parking enforcement officers made the list. They're yeah. making over well, they, 100000 very simple explanation to that. The, the city uh, receives all of the revenue generated by our parking enforcement officers and there is a program that the city funds that enables officers to come back on callback, so to work their days off, uh, to work even on their annual leave so that they can write tickets. And for every dollar that the city spends uh, in expenditure to bring those officers on, back on callback, those, those officers, by virtue of the revenue generated from their tickets, generate about $7 in revenue. So there's a very significant return on that investment. But they've earned that money simply because they've agreed mm -hmm. to the city's request to come in and work extra hours in order to generate that revenue on behalf of the city. Uh, very quickly, Chief, got to mention uh, you recently had surgery. You are looking well. Thank you, ma'am. 
Uh, so you had knee surgery. Yeah, I had a full knee replacement over at Toronto Western Hospital. I was treated fabulously there. I'm really pleased with the result. And, uh, um, I've, you know, I've had some difficulties with my knees over the years, and, and you know, this, this went really well, and I'm back on my feet. And but there's a side benefit, too. You're losing weight. Well, there's, you know, there's two parts of, of bad knees. Part of it's arthritis, and the other part's gravity. And the surgeon took care of the arthritis. <laughs> I, it's my responsibility to take care of the gravity, and I yeah. think I'll take a little bit of pressure off. And I have a strong incentive to do that, and, and there's nothing wrong with trying to get fit and healthy and, and stay that way. And, you know, I've, I've got to... A, a, a lot of miles to put on in this to keep this city safe, and, and so I got to keep myself in good shape. And to, do that. to chase after his new grandson. And Grandpa to do that too. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thanks so All much right. for coming on the of show. Of course. Anytime.